Hello, my friends. This is the podcast that brings a wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. And that's Not Just Blowing Smoke. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Hello, everyone. That was Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were just listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke. Coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio headquarters here in Londonderry, New Hampshire, right in the 724 Lounge. I'm Pastor Padron. I'm here with my uh, co-hosts, Nick and Dave. They're over there tonight. Everybody's in different places, so I can't can't get things straight. And we have three guests on the show tonight. We've got right next to me, we've got Kaz Walters, who's the assistant director over at the La DC uh, Distribution Group. We've got Cindy Saka sitting with us. She's back on the podcast. And we've got Yvonne Ramey. Who is also from Dunbarton. We've got two Dunbarton girls on tonight. (laughs) And uh, we are starting off smoking this. This is the Red Meat Lovers Beef Stick. Yeah, baby. Beef. (laughs) The beef. Now, Yvonne, when we talked about doing a Red Meat Lovers on the show, you insisted on this size. Yeah. What, What about this size makes it your favorite? Is that a trick question? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not using it as a euphemism. I just want to know why you like this versus the porterhouse or the um, filet mignon or the... Well, they, oh, because you know... it doesn't require Bernays, right? <laughs> you could pour any Bernays sauce on any steak. Yeah. I disagree with you there. Negative. Well, you know, eat, Steak eat... is good on its own, brother. Each of the sizes, though it's the same blend, mm-hmm. because they're different sizes, they taste a little different. Mm-hmm. And I just really like this one a lot. And that this is this is actually my favorite size too. So it, I get. Would you say like it's a Corona Gorda kind of yeah, size? I would. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I concur with you. I, I I think this is the best from my palate in the in the out of the four. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've. I'm it's kind the one of... we run out of first, so I oh, think yeah. most people agree. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I remember you gave me a, um, like, one of the first. Arnie was has... it October? No, I, I don't run short of Bernays. Like, that is my favorite. <laughs> but was it when I was here in October or August? No. I... It had been October, right? I yeah. think it was October. I remember you, you brought me one to try, and it instantly, it's like, oh, this is going to be a new favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. So the beef stick is a uh, six by forty-eight uh, vitola in that series, and all of them, like Yvonne said, have the same blend. It's a uh, Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, uh, San Andreas binder, and Nicaraguan fillers. And um, what kind of things are you when you smoke this? What kind of things do you pick up about it? You say you like these flavors the best. What? What about this side? What pops to you as you smoke this? I really wish you didn't ask me that question. <laughs> no, because honestly, I would like to tell you that I have this amazing palate and I can taste all kinds of great things. That is not the way my palate works. I either know I like it or I don't like it. And you just really like I it. I just really like it. I respect that, though. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. There's not noise like, oh, I get notes of this. It's like, this is good. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and that's all that matters. Yep, like, that's all do you I need. enjoy this? Right. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I truly enjoy this. It is mm-hmm. very good. Cindy, is this your favorite size of this cigar, too? It is. I, I like this, and I like, like, those 4 by 48s I like mm-hmm. the small ones. Mm-hmm. But um, but if I'm going to have a double Corona, a, a, a corona Gorda, corona Gorda it will, this is my favorite size. Yeah, just, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's about the way it feels in my hand, mm-hmm. the way it smokes how it feels with a draw it's mm. it's a it, it's a whole bunch of things i don't like box press cigars mm-hmm. i find that really difficult to, to like it doesn't 
it's like a square peg in a round hole. And, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's to get them to she said it. Yeah. She said right. it. Like, she, even she the best she, she broke like, the seal. <laughs> it's yeah, over yeah. now. Here we go. <laughs> but the other ones, the uh, the larger ring gauges, just feel uncomfortable because I have small hands. So mm-hmm. you know, you have a big ring right. gauge. You feel yeah. like you've got this big salami thing. There, I did it again. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, so every she's going to be doing that all night. I she love it. will be so I proud. Love it. Absolutely. <laughs> every blend is different. Every palette's different. Yeah. But to me, like I am a Lonsdale Corona, Corona. or Corona Gorda guy. Yeah. And there are exceptions. Like there are some cigars out there that's that like, oh, the Robusto is better yeah. or the yeah. Torah, but. Mm-hmm. I find most blends to me, like not just like size and, and smoking time and all mm. that, most blends to me present the best in those Vitolas yeah. to my taste. I, yeah. I agree with I that. Too. I concur with that too. Yeah. And it's I also agree. part of like the whole smoking experience. If it, this sounds, I well, maybe it sounds corny, but if it doesn't feel good in, even in your hand, if you're conscious that, oh God, this just doesn't, mm-hmm. just stop, Dan. <laughs> Saying, <laughing>. you know. <laughs> It feels yeah. good. If it doesn't I, feel good in your hand, it doesn't feel good in your hand. What are you do? There's nothing we can do about that. I thought you were point. taking a risk having two redheads on the podcast, but you're the problem. <laughs> <laughs> the man looks like she Santa Claus over like, there. Like I said, you know, Pastor Padron has heard a lot, and therefore, <laughs> you know, yeah, there you go. Nick, what are you picking up from the cigar? Dark chocolate. Dark some chocolate. spice and some dark chocolate. Some leather. Really, really good. No, I, there's an earthy note in there, mm-hmm. but not like crazy earth. It's like very, very, su- very, very subtle. But mm-hmm. I'm getting that sweet dark chocolate, a little espresso, a little spice on there, a little spice more on the retro hill than than the actual puff on that. The earth, like it's there, but it's not even yeah. secondary. It's like tertiary. Yeah, like, it's yeah. Like it's tertiary. there, but it's I don't like know what tertiary means. But third. yeah, yeah, like, not second, but third. <laughs> Yes. Like it's there, but it's like what does a base note. Yeah. Yeah. Third place. <laughs> You're a pastor. Don't you understand the concept of a trinity? Whoa. Oh. Totally the warlock is about to take you to Bible study. He, man. Gets, he, 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 he gets trinity. It's not tertiary. <laughs> I was giving him crap because he didn't it's know not even what Latin. it meant. Not the, I didn't know what it meant. You can't get through seven years of school, you know. I went to divinity and, and school. Graduate school. I know what first year means. Not know and not know what <laughs> Trinity means. That's just that's just. Wrong. I'm pretty sure tertiary is pagan. <laughs> I mean, Trinities are too. But let's not put oh, 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 oh. another podcast for another well, Monday. Christmas, so. That's true. Cindy, do you see how sometimes this it podcast go off the rails? Uh, yeah. I told you before you before we even started, you don't know what you signed up for. <laughs> oh, she my. knows exactly what she signed up for. <laughs> I don't know why like, she's here, Cindy. And I've met. We're we're cool, <laughs> but I don't. She's never. I told her you've never got a front row seat to my shenanigans, Ooh. much less mine and Dan together. Here we yeah. go. I'm waiting. Yeah, it's, I it's haven't pretty... seen them yet. You're still holding out. Oh, it's gonna be. We're only what you're in enabler. We're only like five minutes <laughs> into the show. We're only like five minutes also, into the show. I appreciated so. Vaughn for not going back to the office and going like, "Gosh, like you." Just, just stay away from Kaz. <laughs> Speaking of Facebook posts, you can't hide that. Oh, it's yeah. I'm actually more moderated. Uh, contrary to most people, like I think they're more outrageous on social media than they're. I'm the opposite. I'm more moderated on social media because I don't want a record. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't want to get canceled ten I'm years down the road. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Something, yeah. something he posted. It's like here is this meat. pie I made, and here is this dish, and like this is the place I traveled. And meanwhile, like you don't know what I did. Like. <laughs> Like, while making this dish or, like, while I was on these travels. <laughs> or these memes that he sent to, like, 15 people. You started that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> gotta break the I love, like, baby. randomly, like, I'm with an account or I'm working and, like, oh, somebody's texted me and it's, like, Nick. And it's, like, the most, like, hilarious outrageous, but questionable meme. And it's, like, outrageous <laughs> thing possible. Like, That's why we clicked, guys. man. That's it, baby. That's it. Anyway. So, we're pairing, we're pairing a scotch with this. Yes. yes. All right. Now, I... One of one of the things that that always kind of bugs me about scotches is what they're scotch. It, what no the the names <laughs> why they're There's, scotch. You don't always know how to pronounce it. Scotch. Because, yeah. But oh, like, I may be like the tape. I'm gonna say Glen Morang. That's how I pronounce it, but that is with absolutely no confidence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. So it, we are doing the Glen Morangi 
14. 14. What do you like about this scotch, Kaz? So, Merengue. I, I thought it was Merengue. I'm, Merengue. for the most part, an equal opportunity <laughs> drinker. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's not. <laughs> if, if it's wet, it's in here. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like where he's going with that. I, so I, I agree. Do. That's what she said. But no, <laughs> hit it. So, oh, I mean, it's it's good. not common. It is not common that I drink vodka or tequila unless it's in a cocktail like this. Like, those are the two spirits that I'm usually not yeah. a frequent partaker of. Mm. Rum, whiskeys, gin, like, Boys. fairly well versed in. Um, when it comes to scotch, yes. I personally prefer those of the Highland variety. Mm-hmm. I explain, like explain that to people well, that don't know what so that is. So there are a... It's been a while since I've really studied up on this, but there are about like six different tiles of types of scotch. Layman's terms. And they're divided by region of Scotland. Yes. And each little region of Scotland Ooh. has a unique approach mm-hmm. to scotch, mm-hmm. and it's really just boils down to how much peat smoke they apply to the yeah. to the spirit. Yeah. Or to the actual grain. Yeah. Most that I have encountered, and this is anecdotal, prefer or like the most popular thing. It's kind of like with beer, like IPAs went in vogue for a while. Like people were looking for that hoppiness. Mm. With scotch, they want that like smoky mm. peatiness. Yeah, baby. And that is more the lowland yeah. or give me, uh, give, Islay. Give it all to me. Lowland or that. island variety. Those are two <laughs> separate. Like I'm not saying they're the same. Those are two separate varieties. But Islay scotch and lowland, particularly Islay, use prominent smoke elements into the flavor. Our bag. Um, I was about to say, our bag is like very smoky. Lafroig, if you're if you're a friend of Lef- a fan of yeah. Lafroig, you you know like what you're after. You're looking mm-hmm. for that really mm-hmm. smoky, yeah. pungent, powerful note. Lagavulin. Yes. Yeah. Oh, if you're Ron Swanson, Woo! like it's, I love Ron Swanson. But I love um, that man. I love Ron Swanson. I Sorry. I have different Scotch preferences though. <laughs> Whereas Highland Scotch, which, as the name suggests, is from the the Highland region, they, I mean, what makes Scotch Scotch is how the barley is uh, malted, mm. and then the uh, the application of peat smoke. In the Highland region, it is definitely present, mm. but it is subtle. It is not the prominent flavor. Mm-hmm. It is present though. Um, that way you get a more nuanced, broad flavor profile, which is more to my taste. Uh, Glen Morangi is like my just casual sipping whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, usually it's the 12 or 14. And we haven't gotten to the pipe tobacco element yet, but I felt that something, a, a whiskey or a spirit of a smoky character was like appropriate for these two blends. Mm. And I felt if we went for something that was more Isle or more peaty, it would have it would overwhelm. Like yeah. it's too much of one note, yeah, yeah. and you don't get mm. the nuances of the scotch. You don't get the nuance, nuances of the cigar. You don't get the nuances of the pipe tobacco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you wanted something to complement without overwhelming. And immediately, I thought of Glen Morangi, twelve or fourteen, and um, no, well, there's the, a lot going on with the beef stick, and there's a lot going on. Yes, with the I mean these are coin. all like very strong, enjoyable flavors, yeah. and you don't want to drown any of them no, out. No, no, you don't. And um, I was super familiar, super familiar with. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. How much of this did you drink? No. <laughs> Not enough. I mean, right now or today? <laughs> on my so, ninth Negroni. <laughs> I mean, sixth maybe, but. Uh, <laughs> so I've I've smoked a lot of the pipe tobacco we're going to smoke, which we'll down. get to later. The, I've had two beef sticks before today. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> of course he did. Say. Man of many talents. She said. <laughs> and, uh, Nick's suggestion was like, yeah, like that, that's probably a good direction with like the spirit or the drink to go with. And I was like, yeah, I'm familiar enough with the tobacco. Let me get another beef stick. So earlier today I smoked a beef stick and, uh, the, um, 724 lounge was, uh, more than kind enough to let me like sample a few whiskeys and it, it, I'm, kind of proud that my intuition like 
bore out, at least to my taste. I don't know how you guys feel about the whiskey pairing. I, I think it's pretty good. good. I don't even it's done it damn yet. smooth. That that's what I settle with. It's like this is going to be complimentary, but not overpowering. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of sweetness in the drink, and the sweetness is bringing more sweetness out of the cigar. Yes, like you want it to be complimentary, but not analogous because then you're not appreciating either yeah it's it becomes monotone mm -hmm. and um Help. do you see what i was talking about earlier like there's a like i call it like a stone fruit like scotch is not fruity uh -uh. but there is like something that alludes to that with me and i may just be crazy in this yes you see oh. what i'm talking about right mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so and which is not particularly common with scotches that aren't aged in like a cognac or a or wine rum, barrel rum cast or yeah. something like mm -hmm. that yeah mm -hmm. Usually but, when you get the rum cast or the cognac cast, you get a really deep, uh, I can't say sugary sweetness, but you get that mm -hmm. that molasses yeah. mm -hmm. in that, in oh, those. Oh, I oh, learned. She's smoking it? Mm, smoking I should have had them put these in uh, Glencairn glasses, so like it'd be easier to smoke, yeah. I, I mean, I'm... My ancestry is Irish and, and Norman, so like, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce Scottish words well. I apologize. Nobody can. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, that's, that's wow. a Scottish. That, the only that was my whole, yeah. the whole reason I said I, I'm not sure. I'm, Glen Morangi, I think, is how you pronounce it. That's what I think, too. And no offense to anybody that, like, if I have it wrong, like, I, I'm, i like I said, I'm not saying it with confidence. Mm. But anyway, I ramble here. I, I thought that yes. the, the Glen Morangi 14 was a great pairing because it had notes that were complementary and similar, mm. but not identical. Mm -hmm. Oh, because boy. Because you need contrast to appreciate both. Guys, you're going to hate. Smoking the glass. Why? Because it tastes exactly like, uh, I can't say exactly like, I mean, like there's some aspects of it when you're smoking the glass that it almost gets to the point where it's peated, almost. Well, I mean, I love peated. that. Uh, well, if it's, it's peated, yeah, it's it's like almost. Well, but well, if you're I, a you, when, girl, when, when, right, that's, that's what I'm be, saying. Yeah. That's like really, if it's peated, that is the, it's subtle, subtle, subtle. I was I was doing some work here in the lounge earlier while I was trying it, and there was a guy who, who enjoyed scotches, and we were talking, and it's like, I, like I love Irish whiskey. Yeah. We were talking, Green Spot's my favorite. Yeah. But when I want scotch, I want scotch. Yeah, hell yeah. And like there's no point to drinking scotch if it doesn't have a scotch character. But that being said, mm. I like my peat subtle. Uh, I like it. So to me, me in the face. like I, I argue that like Highland Scotch is the Scotch for the Irish whiskey drinker. Mm. It's different enough, but it's not overwhelming wow. to a Scotch drinker's palate yeah. or a, an Irish whiskey drinker's palate. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you're a Lafroy guy or mm. Arbeck, like those are the two prime examples, really. I love that. Uh -huh. Like you're uh -huh. you're gonna go like, where's the peat? Exactly. Where's and, but the it, it's there, but it's to me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to me is more in balance yeah. like mm -hmm. that's not the out. only it's not the only note you're getting true and there's nothing wrong. like if you like that flavor there's nothing wrong with drink like i'm not passing a judgment here mm. i like to just sure. taste more smoke Lighting. like if you're a pipe smoker like there are some guys who like lap bombs where like they want they would smoke latakia straight mm. and there's nothing wrong with that I love me some Latakia. I like to taste Latakia, but I also like to taste like Virginia's and Turkish and Perique, like uh, oh, yeah. the, the melange. The melange. Yeah. No. So, but uh, I recommend trying it, like whether you are an Arbeg guy, like it's it. If anything, it's going to be a unique experience for you. Like, like you yeah. you you like heavily peated <clears throat> scotches, but oh, this baby, is good, yeah. right? You enjoy. Oh, this. I like all scotches, particularly obviously Ron Burgundy. Uh, I like scotch. Uh, scotch, <laughs> got scotch. Here it goes down, down into my belly. Um, you need to get that as a stinger. That would be great. Um, about right now, but um, yeah, I mean, I drink. Oh my God, I drink everything. But I mean, moonshine to coquito to tequila to all types of rum to everything. I hey, mean, I we're love... we're in the middle of Hanukkah. Mogan David. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's a Jewish table wine. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll drink that too. I mean, whatever. But I mean, I'm always gravitated gravitated towards some Lafroy or some Art Bag. If I'm out with the wife and we're going to a restaurant and they and I see that they got a, a bottle of Art Bag, I'm buying that. Yeah. Mm. I love me some Art Bag or some Lafroy. I love that peatiness. It's just right after a meal, a nice hearty meal. That is just just butter it's it is 
the whipped cream on my so ice cream. Like I will drink Lebroig or Arbeck. Like I I don't dislike them. Like yeah. if somebody get, like I enjoy it. It's just like if I'm ordering for myself, it's not what I go for. Yeah. But also to like I know it's not the cigar we're smoking, but like how you're describing those scotches yeah. is how I view. And I know it was the concept behind the blend. Mm-hmm. But my favorite Dunbarton cigar by far is the Sober Mesa line. Of course. And, like, it serves that same function. Mm. Like, it is, I mean, by design, that Steve has been very transparent. Like, that's what it's for. Yeah. Or the the idea behind it. But, like, yeah. Like, there's something about a full-flavored, bold, whether it's a spirit or a smoke, that's satisfying after dinner. So, like, oh, I yeah. totally get that. Oh, yeah. So I'm curious to know what what Cindy and Yvonne think about the pairing. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, I, I find this particular one, I, I mm-hmm. actually like Glen Morangi. Mm. Morangi? Morangi? Glen Morangi. I but, call it Glen Morangi, but, but who I, am I? I'm but just you're pronouncing guy. it with, like, the English, like, phonetics. So. I'm just, I'm just, it's, it's what I read. But it's smooth. <laughs> there you go. It goes mm-hmm. down. And you're right. The, it's about 10 years ago, Steve and I had the opportunity to go to scotland and mm-hmm. we did log of Lynn and our bag did the tours oh, oh. had this had the samplings <laughs> lymph was closed that day so we're mm-hmm. like okay we'll skip that one but we also went into the highlands and um into the just north of edinburgh in that area yeah. and um near inverness and some really great whiskey that you can't get here Mm. and delicious stuff that they blend it with other things to make whisk other whiskeys and just really really lovely so this one i really i like anyway mm-hmm. so good choice cats i yeah. just you know yeah. i've Thank had you. it before i like it it's not a surprise but it does go really well with the yeah, smoke. yeah. It complimenting you can, it really i like well. it very much also yeah. i smoke the glass like i i do enjoy that yeah you that's that like bang of smokiness oh like yeah just amped up the smokiness and then it just like the the aftertaste of the sweetness of the cigar. Just oh, it, it brings out sweetness yeah. in the yeah. cigar and like way more. This is like a like really like top cigar for me. Like from the first one that you let me sample. But I do think that that particular scotch or something that variety does bring out some notes in it. Yeah, that sure. are more subtle without mm-hmm. it. Like mm-hmm. it, it broadens that spectrum, and. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool that you got to sample like these that aren't exported, like scotches and stuff. Yeah, that, that's really cool. And people like, not to derail here, but like single malts are like the thing now. Yeah. But people don't yeah. understand like that's a really recent advent. Like Winston Churchill drank a lot of scotch, and like his scotch of choice was Johnny Walker Black. Like yeah. blends up until very recently were like <laughs> yeah. the it, scotch. The blends. Yeah. So the blends that they export. Everybody knows them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They've all had them. But right. to get the base scotch that they use, yeah. is, we don't get that here. And yeah. that was actually quite fun to taste that scotch. Yeah, that's cool. And people, enjoy don't, it. people don't give blends enough credit. Like, right. blends give you consistency. Well, yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. they do. I mean, Johnny Walker is what? The top selling scotch It still out has a there? royal warrant on it. Yeah. So, like, the, the royal family of uh, the UK, which... The Scottish would probably not see that as a, <laughs> a point of front, but like that's still no. because it has a, a royal warrant. Like it's still the Scotch of yeah. choice by the royal family. Yeah. And the prime minister who arguably like was instrumental in saving like Western civilization, like yeah. that was his preferred Scotch. Like it's only been in the past like 40 years that single malts have been like right. the premium. Yeah, probably even less than Or that. the preference. Like yeah. mm-hmm. single or blends were like the thing. Yep. And just for Nick, Ooh. they claim that they have enough peat for 1,500 years of whiskey. <laughs> That's Ooh, what they claim. What, what, uh, good. What, yeah. Scotch what is safe. Scotch? Oh. No, no, in, in that area. Oh, uh, oh, and, and, Jesus. Yeah. But we, yeah. Thank so you, you're, Lord. You're good for a very long time. Thank you, Scotch <laughs> Lord. <laughs> it is not a finite resource, hopefully. So it's. Thank you, Scotch oh, Lord. Oh, goodness. Oh man, they might run out of barley before they run out of <laughs> probably. <laughs> Maybe, probably. I bet. Oh my god. But but the smell of the pea, uh, in the cooking process of the barley to yeah. get to the mash, it's it's heavenly. It's oh. just like it's it's really yummy to smell it. How would you describe it? 
Petey. Well, it's Petey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Petey. Uh, um, like, is it as smoky as it, yeah. the aroma as it, it is in whiskey, or is yeah. it? Like, okay. Yeah, it has that smoky scent to it. Yeah. When you, especially when you get to the mash, you can still smell that smokiness because it oh. it just burns and burns, and the barley cooks, and it it just oh, it's so. really. Cindy, delicious. stop teasing me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> My God. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. So, I'm curious. What are you guys thinking? Of the beef stick. It's disgusting. <laughs> In the it. best way, right? <laughs> In the best it. way. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> but I'm going to continue smoking it. <laughs> no, it's great cigar, man. I mean, I mean, I, I don't think I've had a bad cigar from Steve. I mean, yeah. Jesus. I mean, from the Todos Las Dias, from the one that I always go to and I always recommend, which is the El Americana, which is their regular Toro size from the Sober Mesa. Um, oh, can I step in here? No, minute? you can't. I'm talking. Okay. What were you saying? What were you saying, I was going to... Dave, feel free to mute Nick. Talk to... Oh. Me. <laughs> I'll mute myself. Cut the mic. No, no, no. Cut the I mic. Was, Nick has been want... removed from the panel. I just want to talk about this, too. Sober Mesa is kind of going to have a little name change very yep. soon. Oh. Um, oh. Yep. Yeah. Americano's <laughs> going away. You know that? Not exactly. No, not it's, exactly. I know. I'm just teasing. It. Yes, yes. That one is not going away. But it's going it, to be called the Toro. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. the regular Toro. It's Sober Mesa Solita. Solita. So, Solita Toro. Right. Yes. So these are now going to come in a 13 count box. Right. Interesting. So, and they will, they're here. So we'll be shipping those. Soon. They came today. Yeah. Ooh, okay. So the, the blend hasn't changed. The it's blend has the, not changed. Right. It's the box changed. Count. Yeah, the box, box count. count has changed and the names changed. So it's still a Toro. It's the same blend. Mm -hmm. It's just different. We, we have lost two sizes. Sorry. Sorry, Kaz. Yeah. Sorry, Kaz. Okay. What was well, it? The short Churchill? <laughs> No, was the short Churchill's still there. What was your size? The, the Cervantes Fino. Ah. I still have a a decent amount in my humidor. I mean, <laughs> But like sure. I said, I like Corona Gordos, mm. Coronas, particularly Lonsdale, and that like fit into that mm. that Vitola size that I go for. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I'm sure I'll find another. Well, Vitola you know what'll list. happen? Steve will make it a PCA release in a couple of we years. We might have a yeah. then He's yeah. gonna call it the Kaz. Yeah. He's gonna call it the Kaz yeah. and no. just release it once yeah. a year. Like, no, he's gonna call it the he ginger stick. His the ginger <laughs> stick. <laughs> but now he is known to do that. Bring it back yep. to a limited release. Yep. Not that I know that he'll do that. Yeah. No, he knows. but it's entirely but it possible. That is Absolutely. not a declarative in the statement. realm of possibility. As we, refer to it, we, we refer to it as being on hiatus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. tucked away for and, a while, and you never know when yep. it'll come right. back. We're still <laughs> waiting for Pequeño. Pequeño. Yeah, but Cindy and I are. Yeah, to big, me, big like, is scotch. that mm, makes me appreciate the Dunbarton brand more. What, like, what was it, that? It speaks to the integrity of like the blends that, like, hey, this tobacco that we've been using isn't available, or like this doesn't meet our standards. So rather than compromise, this just isn't available. Like that is entirely respectable of any consumable good. But like, you see. Unfortunately, you kind of see that like in our industry, it's like, well, we got to keep this on the shelf. So let, let's make changes like, no, if we can't make it as right. what it's always been and the expectations of, of the people who enjoy it, we're not going to like put it out there unless, right. and like, I have, I would rather do, we've said this with other things, like in our conversations while I've been up here, like I'd rather do without for a period of time with something than have a lesser version. Right. Yeah. So like, exactly. that's. Like, I have nothing but, like, to me, that is just more of the integrity of the Dunbar mm. name. Mm. That's that's Steve's philosophy. He just wants the very best. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he pushes us to do that in everything else, too, mm -hmm. from customer service to sales to, you know, just everything. His packaging has to be impeccable, you know, and he, he struggles with these things constantly, you know. On, on that note, can I say, I love the packaging of For the, the meat lovers. The meat lovers? Yeah. You know, awesome. that, that look of being a, a you know, a chop block. A cutting you know, board, cutting yeah. Board. yeah. Uh, Which I have used. A in, cutting board it, with it, everybody. I have one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I have one at home and I, I use really, it all the time. I really think it's cool and different. And you need to do a Dunbar, like, like you guys have done marketed or branded things. Like you need to do 
a meat cleaver with like the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust logo like burned into the handle. <laughs> and it's got to be Damascus. Red meat lovers did it. And it's designed as a cigar cutter. <laughs> like right. you cut it with a cleaver. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, the, the kids will love creating it. problems. Right? <laughs> the kids will love it. <laughs> Steven's watching. He's like, that's a good idea. <laughs> You're right. so, he's like, damn, I got to do that now. So the gentleman that did the Red Meat Lovers blend, he also did a cleaver. Really? He, yeah, he did do a cleaver and a spatula to flip your burgers mm -hmm. that has all that branding in it. And then um, a while back. Smokin did a did the cutting board with a sock of squatch on it. Mm. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. The only proper way to light a red meat lovers is to take a pre lit charcoal briquette. <laughs> with the yeah, with the yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and try not to burn yourself while you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's been some branding. Mm. We just don't do it. Mm -hmm. so. See, personally, I hate the beef stick because of the fact that it's a Dunbarton product, and that means that it's constantly sold out. <laughs> Not constantly. I mean, this size is constantly sold out. I mean, the beef stick. I mean, as soon as they come in, they fly right off. The Let's show. switch gears. So, oh, this. So is, I hate it because awful. I can't have more of it. <laughs> more for me. That's it. Right is that now, fair? Our, our biggest seller is the ribeye right now. So, really? Yeah, we we can't keep that in stock. But wow. that Remind means me. more beef stick for you. That's so. the ribeye. Is, <laughs> it all works. What that, size? Vitola? That's a six sixty, isn't it? It's, uh, no, that's the porter house. Love that's porter. Porter. Oh, the, right. the Toro. It'd be the 6x52. Yeah, yeah, the Toro, yeah. Yeah. That's a, and the that's filet a... is the Robusto. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm The Toro is my second favorite size. That was the first one that I had, and I fell in love with it immediately. And then I jumped to the 660, and I was like, eh. And then I did the beef stick, and I'm like, okay, <gasps> all right. <laughs> and that's amazing how different a blend can present. But the size, different. Right. It's yeah. not the blend; it's the size. Yeah, I mean, uh, every size is going to give you something exactly. different. Exactly. Like the blend know? is is excellent as it is, but like yeah. how it presents in different formats Vitolas, or different yeah. vitolas. And um, like, I don't know if it was the last time I was on or the time before, but we were smoking a cigar, and it was in a <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. Oh, we a, don't do that. No, no. It wasn't. A, <laughs> no, let him talk. Let him talk. It wasn't a Dunbarton thing. But I remember before we went on, it was a Vitola size that none of us would have reached for in a humidor. We would have reached for a different size. Huh. But in that particular Vitola, I can't I remember which cigar it was. I've been on enough. Mm. But like in that particular Vitola, it shined for us, like to our taste. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing how just the difference in, in ring gauge and Wasn't the, oh. the hot cake cannon? Because I, I remember know. it was no, I think like it was, in... I think it was a, a Rocky cigar now that I think about it. Yeah, it could have been the, the 60 or it could have been the DBS. The DBS was really good, big. Mm -hmm. I think that was it. The, yeah. The, I think that was the it. The 60 is great and the mm -hmm. 60, the, the 20th, I think, was yeah. the 20th edge. That was... That's very good in the 62. Yeah. Yeah, there are exceptions to the rule, but mm. this, this tends to be the size mm -hmm. in most cigars mm. that has that sweet spot of Essentia, so highlighting, highlighting, the, highlighting the, the nuances of the blend. Mm. You know? Um, now, something I've been wanting to ask ever since the idea of having you and Yvonne on the show, Cindy, uh -oh. is like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I this don't is, know. this is, this is an opportunity for you to share some secret information. Secret information. Mm. What the information that most, this is like <clears throat> the behind the scenes Dunbar. What? Cut it out. What is it like? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Working, speak for your chest, and boy. in your yeah. case, living with a guy like <laughs> Steve Saka. Well, number one, he he never turns off, never. I think sometimes he's talking in his sleep and he's thinking up things, but every now and then in his sleep will say, "You dumbass." So I don't know who's he's yelling at at that point. <laughs> if it's me or if it's somebody else, I don't know. Might but, be something I did that day. Uh, you never know. <laughs> oh, I'm dumbass. Um, oh. <laughs> I know. You've got to record something. something. <laughs> we, He's we, like one of those sleep recorders with a story on your phone. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> I think he'll, he'll be yelling, and I don't know who he's yelling at. Um, but he, it really doesn't stop. I mean, mm -hmm. he's it's, he's always checking out Facebook to see where things are and 
who's asking what and what's going on. And he's, he's very in touch with his consumers. He wants to, to be seeing what, uh, what they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And he's always been that way. Even at JR, he mm -hmm. was very, very in touch with his consumers so that he could kind of get his finger on the pulse of it all. Right. So, you know, so that's one thing. It's never off. Mm -hmm. uh, there are days when he yells and that's not pleasant. <laughs> Every, anytime anybody has to go see him in his office, they're like, am I getting fired? <laughs> <laughs> Every time it's like, no, you're not getting fired. He just wants to ask you a question. <laughs> so, um, but he, you know, he's he is brilliant at what he does and he's been doing this a long time so his marketing skills and his blending skills are top notch mm -hmm. um his selling skills you know he's he is a he's a little rough around the edges with people so we have to kind of pull that back and calm him down a little bit. Well, you're like just smoke the damn thing someone, i say this as someone who is in a sales field so like any people who are in sales don't be offended you know what I'm talking about. And we're because, not all going to be offended here. Because his, well, I'm talking more like retail sales and wholesale sales are a little different, I think. Mm -hmm. But I've been in both sides. But you saying like his sales stuff, like I see that as a, again, I'm in sales. I see that as more of a, an attribute because you can be 100% honest mm. and have integrity. I don't but, know how to articulate this. Like, bear with me here. Just say it with your chest, boy. No, I'm going to say it, but I just don't want to be <laughs> say misrepresented. It. Say it. If someone who who is passionate and produces a good product, but their weaker point is sales, I immediately hear, oh, they're not talented in bullshitting. Like, Steve is like who yeah. he is, and he's yeah. honest, mm -hmm. and right. he's direct. And he's yeah. got like, bravado. It's not, it's, yeah. Yes, yeah. it's not flowery. It's like no. fully, no. like you Straight can be 100%, forward. yes, you can be 100% honest and have integrity, mm. but still bullshit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you can. get what's it, like, bullshit yeah. to me is not dishonest or anything like that. What I'm saying is like, it's to the point and it's direct. Mm. Whereas like sales requires a finesse. That's a better word. I was about yes. to say tact. <laughs> finesse. Yes. But like, yeah, like in my personal life, I have I have no tact. <laughs> but like I, I do, I have the ability to like. How can I say the same thing with exact honesty, the same way, but it will be received how I want it to be received? Mm. Yeah. Because some people like directness and like plain spoken. A lot of people outside of even like a, a sales purchaser dynamic, just in the real world, like speaking with friends, like that level of directness, like people don't respond normally well to that. So like. I respect that. Like, it's like, no, this is what it is. And I'm passionate and like, just plain spoken, like no flowery language, no like spin on it. So I don't think that's necessarily a, a bad thing. Like, no, it's not. It's, yeah. it's just, it's, it's just a trait. Yeah. It's, it's not exactly that. It's that like, we can't, when he's at the trade show, he's mm -hmm. not allowed to take orders because he has no clue what's <laughs> actually happening. Even though he makes up the deals, he always screws it up somehow. So <laughs> we, we just say, you sit and do media, talk to the people that come by. Enjoy you be yourself. the creative and we'll yeah and yeah. we'll be the nuts and bolts we'll take care of the mechanics so um but he now has uh my daughter-in-law is, is working with us and she is from nicaragua mm -hmm. so she has uh she's in the factories like she can talk to the factories and box makers and get things done which has helped him tremendously so yeah um but yeah it's 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 like it's never it's just a never-ending job. It's twenty-four-seven. Is it a never-ending job trying to to deal with the aftermath of his <laughs> bravado and super honesty? And is that what you're saying? No, no, no. It's it's never-ending in that like <laughs> dealing with the consumers is never-ending. That's true. Yeah. Thinking about what he's going to do next mm -hmm. never stops mm -hmm. the creative part never stops all of that's going yeah. on that so. also gives those some some like a nimble character or, or agility not agility um you steve you see steve is actual 
<laughs> yeah, that's Don't very. Be that's, honest. Come no, on. no, he is, Woo! especially like in a in a He's mental sense because, panda. like, what what you just said, like, boil it down to what is. You guys are a family business. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. husband, wife, like your you said your daughter in law, daughter in law, like, and yeah. that versus like a big like corporation or a larger like <laughs> big big brand like there's flexibility that you guys have and yet yeah. i understand like small businesses are more chaotic in that sense or more like family but that allows you to be more adaptable and agile with meeting market demands needs and what your consumer wants like you yeah. were talking about mm -hmm. like he's he's active on social media and i see that i love the the times when he goes on rants and he ends it with like snicker between yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like he is saying what all of us in the industry want to say yeah. and i i respect that i have so. never seen so many comments and things i don't know how he keeps up with it but also like I, that's that's one thing that like make like the people who love dunbarton the products mm -hmm. like that's also another reason that endears him is because like steve is real that's what i was trying to get to with like yeah. the sales yeah. he's and, real and that's that gives confident consumer mm -hmm. confidence. Mm -hmm. So, well, we have a very tiny little team. We yeah. have we have uh, nine people now, about to be ten, mm -hmm. and everybody does. Is that because everything. of a birth? No. <laughs> no. No. There's there's no there's no babies involved. No babies. No. Dan, that's really <laughs> that's not a that was that. not an appropriate question, Dan. That was <laughs> how dare you? No, but but we are very efficient at what we do, mm -hmm. and so that's I think that's why um, you know if he sees a cog in the machine that's mm -hmm. not going. That's mm -hmm. when he'll start to say, hey, guys, you got to do something about it. And usually it's me because my job is mm -hmm. the office people and right. the warehouse and making sure it's running smoothly. So, so, you know, Steve's strengths are obviously his, you know, unreal knowledge of tobacco and blending and, and yes. his ability to interact and listen to and respond to his consumer base and interact with them and the way he brands, you know, using Facebook is just, I, I, I don't know anyone that does it better than him. It's called guerrilla marketing. Yeah, very <laughs> much so. No, but really. Like, especially when, not like especially a, a, when ape, Dunbarton like, finds out what's like going on at Dunbarton like through his Facebook posts. It's not conventional, <laughs> but it, it's effective and it's Back yeah, squad yeah. It is. marketing. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> The way that... That's a great that, <laughs> it's that squash marketing. This, that squash marketing. And this industry's changed mm -hmm. a lot in the last fifteen years. It's in the last like five years. Yes. Mm. It, it just it's changed. Yeah. And you know, he's he's trying to keep going along with it and not get lost right. and not forgotten. And that's kind of a daily task. So So that leads right to the next question oh, that I wanted to ask. And that and that is, you know, those are, you know, we know what his strengths are, uh, but we also know that, that just like anything, but it's certainly true with Dunbarton, you know, it, it, it's a team effort. What is it that he, what is it that you know he needs in order to, that you provide that makes Dunbarton mm. able to function at the level that it is? Because if it was... You know, as awesome as Steve is, you know, he isn't the whole thing. It's a it's a team effort with with well, both of you and, I, and the I other people Steve, in the office. Steve and Steve balance each other out. Mm -hmm. I mean, both of their strengths they work together mm -hmm. to make the rest of us the working and that's mechanics. What, that's so that's what I'm. That's what I'm kind of wanting to get at is what are those strengths? Complementary strengths. What are the things that you do that? that really, you know, that, that Steve needs you got from you guys in order for you guys to be the success that you are together as a company. Cindy does a million things. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, uh, uh 900,000. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Steve's the Ligador and I basically run everything. <laughs> I would love that to be true, but it's not. So, um, when we started, it was just the three of us, mm -hmm. my son and Steve and I. And for the first year, that was doable. Mm -hmm. it, it was a small amount of 
of, of customers, we could do it, but then it started growing and growing. And then we're like, we got to bring on number four and that's a bond. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. she started taking over a lot of my tasks and we just kept adding people because I would get trapped with things like accounting that I mm -hmm. don't do well, mm -hmm. not my strength. And we added somebody for that. We just kept adding to build on. And now we're at the point where it's Steve's turn to start adding people he needs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our new hire is very tech based so she can help him with that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of his next new hire should be a graphics designer, but I don't know if that's going to happen, but he's, he, he needs us to be on top of what we do as far as reaching out to our retailers and, getting the sales going and letting them know when our product is in and getting right. it out the door. That's what we have to do to make his life easier. And some days we're really good at it. And some days we're some days, we <laughs> some days we struggle. Yes. And that sounds human. I have to say like for you guys to be a team of 10 and that, to have that the impresses presence me. Yeah, that, that you have in, in humidors across the country, wow. the brand recognition. By so Laudisi Enterprises, our booth was like two rows of like I had like a clear view of the Dunbarton booth at PCA. <laughs> and you guys were always busy. Yep. For you to be a team of ten and have a brand with that much demand when there are corporate brands like that yeah. had comparable demand and probably sometimes like had more lulls than you guys did. I don't remember a lot. Is <laughs> well, yeah, no, I never, I that's never what, looked over there. Point. That's what I'm saying. Like I, so we talked about like before PCA connecting at PCA, maybe have dinner or drinks, like right. because like we have a friendship, right? And it never happened, and that we saw each other twice. Once you had a moment, I think you were like Running penciling in a bathroom break. Yes. And, and that's difficult to do. Yes, it and is. you stopped by the booth and said, hey, and then, like, we passed each other after, the, like, it wasn't even during the show. It was afterwards. I was grabbing a drink before I went to dinner with an account at, like, one of the, the hotel bars, and you were, I think, on your way to a dinner or something, and, like, we, and that was the only two interactions we had, and right. it's because, like, the demand and, like, how busy you were, and, like, to for a team of 10, and not to be, to have, yeah, like it's. And we don't bring everybody to the show. We, right. we leave a little team back at the yeah. Yeah. Ranch, yeah. You, you have know? to. So they can, you know, and things will be different this year. We're changing some things up to make that even more efficient. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all about, trying to make things efficient mm -hmm. so that when somebody calls and has a problem, we can be on it right away, you know, yeah. or. You know, I think if, it speaks. If you need something, we can get it for you. I think it speaks to because if you have all of one but not a, a, a deficiency, deficiency in the other, like it's going to take a toll on the brand. But yep. because of like you have the demand and the fanfare you have about it, yeah. it speaks to both the quality of the product and the quality of the customer service. And it, it doesn't matter how good your product is if the customer service is lacking or vice and, versa. Like you're not going to have that kind of demand, right? Right, and mm -hmm. that's that's the part of the sing compromiso <clears throat> thing. Yeah, we don't let that slide either. We like to have our customers happy. So if they complain about something, they'll get a replacement. Mm -hmm. If they can't sell it, we'll buy it back. And mm -hmm. not many companies do that because I would rather not have it on your shelf if it's going to collect dust. I want it on somebody else's shelf that can sell it. Right. You sell right. what you can sell. Right. You got to know your people. You got to yep. know your customers. And, and that's what we want to help each of our retailers. Do. And that's a dying philosophy. Like it's worth eating the cost of like a few boxes of cigars. If your customer's not happy, even if nothing's wrong with it, if they're not, yeah. happy, it's right. worth eating that to have yeah. a satisfied customer. Yeah. The, like, like what that does and, and the loyalty that brings and the, integrity that that speaks to to the brand like is more than worth it i think we had somebody the other day that got like a a replacement pack and they wrote back and said um you got a customer for life mm. and we get that a lot because we'll go the extra mile to make that person happy they Whether know you'll it's take care of them right, yep. it, right it doesn't matter if it's a consumer or a retailer either way it's just you know we want to make sure that people are happy with our product because we don't mm -hmm. want to put out something that's not going to burn right or right. not you know yeah. you, you got a funny flavor you know right and it's a natural product you know so yeah. and every now and then there's a variation exactly exactly so 
stuff happens. It does. <laughs> and like, I think a lot of people who partake in like cigars, pipe tobacco, even outside of our industry, like wine, things like that, that are natural products that vary from year to year and that sort of thing. And that's not a variance in quality. It's just, it's a natural product. Like people who are connoisseurs of that, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, I think people who like really enjoy Dunbarton are cigar connoisseurs. Like it's, for the it's most an elevation part. of, of, we're, we're not art. in the everyday Joe's exactly. kind of rotation yet. And, yeah. uh, like, I think they kind of enjoy that. I know I do. Yeah. Like, from year to year. Mm -hmm. Like, because if the quality is consistent, those variations are what some of what makes it interesting. Like, they're not variations like, oh, this year is different. Like, but it's like, oh, like, these nuances I'm picking up are, are like, different from year to year in a positive way. Like, that mm -hmm. speaks to the the maintaining of like it is natural and it is sure. with the utmost care yeah does that make sense yeah so again hope that's i'm not speaking out no, of, no no no, no. There, so like... so steve's big part of this is he doesn't just make up these blends he actually sources tobacco mm -hmm. he knows who to get it from so <clears throat> he's got everything from when the farm starts planting it till it's until it's actually looks like this and then put it in a box and all of this stuff mm. too so he takes on that and then does all the marketing. Yeah. Um, and then we just sell them, mm. which, you know, has been very good for us. And we've been very fortunate that people like our product and we're happy to sell it to them. Speaking mm -hmm. of bringing on a graphic designer, like I'm sure you guys need the help, but like Don Barton has some of the best like fans and boxes like oh, art totally. out there. And I remember him seeing, I remember seeing him talk about, I think it was Facebook about the, actually the Sober Meso box and like the, inspiration for it was like 1920s 10s like the teens i think it was yeah like, like and like him telling the story like it's not just like off the seat of his pants or on the it's like He'd this has a history of well, right. and yeah. like and i understand needing help for that as far as like executing those but, concepts but as far as the thought that already goes into it i is, was gonna say i think i think hmm. the person that down the road gets hired for that job it's going to be tough too because mm -hmm. the standards exactly oh, he's very he exact a lot you yeah. know he's very picky he's very he knows the value of marketing and branding he does right he does mm -hmm. and he's very detail oriented so that's why when well i don't have it now but that's why with the me carita band you got that little postage stamp mm -hmm. look on the edge so he, those are the things he looks at also um, the B Carita bands have that like paisley background right. mm -hmm. that is really tough to it's see tonal. on the band. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. there. Uh, you can see it better on the box. The box, on yes. The, on the yep. black box. Yep. Yep. It's pretty prominent. Um, but those are the things that set it apart. He, mm -hmm. he looks at that anybody else would say, nobody will notice. Why are you putting that effort in? Nobody's going to see it. But when they do see it, then they're like, wow, that's, yeah. that's right. really A stunning. lot of care was put yeah, into yes. even the, the minor details of the product. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's part of, like, the romance of it. And that's, like, that is what he excels at. He's very good at it. So, um, other than that, I don't know. What do, you, do you have anything to add at how our team functions? Well, <laughs> efficiently. Nothing we can say online. <laughs> oh, ouch! Wow. No, I think I think we're a well-oiled machine, as they say. We are. You know, but there are times we need to like uh, get a little maintenance and mm -hmm. tweak it up or whatever. You know, there's always so, room for improvement. That so, doesn't matter. That doesn't. It, Yvonne, that, that, do we share a philosophy? I think I've told you about this. Like sugar and leather. It's like when you're breaking a horse. Some horses respond to a sugar cube. Some you got to bring out the crop. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we have our team is like I said, small, and mm -hmm. it's Steve and Dave Lafferty, and we have a guy in the warehouse, and the rest of us are female. So it's a very female. -run That's an company. attribute. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's an attribute. And and it's worked out really well for us. And and luckily the, the women we all have, nobody's catty. We don't get in fights. Right. You know, there's no drama. The one thing I really like is, is I truly feel as if we truly are a team, mm -hmm. and it's at every level. I mean, I admire the fact that both Cindy and Steve will talk to me and everybody. And want to know our opinions about things or what do you think of this or what what 
you know what feedback. are your ideas how should we we go forward with this it's it's not it's not all right nearly everything is steve absolutely but he absolutely will listen to anything any of us say mm. and he doesn't i mean i'll make suggestions now and then obviously not about funding or anything like that he doesn't roll his eyes he could you know <laughs> whether or not he agrees you feel that right. your opinion is listened to and respected yeah, right exactly. yeah. Yeah. yeah there was something i went to him a couple of years ago right before pca with one of our deals i don't know if you oh, remember yes <laughs> but i was adamant that i didn't think this particular deal we were doing was good and he was like well tell me why and i explained it and he goes interesting and then he came out a couple hours later and he goes you know what you're right i think we're going to do it your way and that's what i like mm -hmm. you know what i don't always come up with brilliant ideas absolutely not but i like that things that i think of or anybody else on the team yeah. thinks of that it will be listened to and at least considered right you know right so no, and that's important it is mm -hmm. important i mean that's important to basically anything i think it was Richard Branson, isn't that the guy who was like Virgin Airlines? And right, stuff? Yeah. yes. He, he always said that, it's one of my favorite quotes, like people who run businesses think that their customers are their biggest asset. And that's wrong. Your team and your employees are. If yeah. they're happy, if they feel listened to, if they feel validated, they're going to invest in your business and they are going to make sure yeah. your customers are happy. Right. Yeah. Invest yeah. in your team and yeah. they will make sure they go above and beyond for your consumers. Not saying that like customers aren't important. They no, are. That's absolutely right. true. But like you're 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 putting the cart before the horse if you put them above your team. Mm -hmm. no. Because your team is that's their job. Mm -hmm. And like it sounds like you guys like have it figured out. Oh, no, the team is important yeah. and I want them all to feel mm -hmm. That, that they are an important part, you mm -hmm. know, no matter who they are. And that's been a big asset for me because I find that if I invest in them, they're going to invest back and they'll want to come to work and they'll want to work hard and they'll want to succeed because, you know, our success is based on them. Yeah. You know, I need mm -hmm. them. And I, you know, I'm always telling Avon, I need you all healthy. Everybody take your vitamin C. <laughs> and one of See you Cindy they handing out vitamin C patches to everybody <laughs> coming through the door. Yeah. Make them invest. Like, right. hey, Dunbar here's your orange juice for this morning. <laughs> like, they're, they're integrated. Like, it, yeah. it's not that, like, Dunbarton success is mine. It's, they're the same. It, it's not a, 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 what's the uh, word I'm looking for? It's not reciprocal. It is the same. Yeah. Like because it's it's this enmeshment of right yeah so yep. I, a couple Christmases ago I told them we we do our Christmas party at our house mm -hmm. because we can smoke so mm -hmm. we do our Christmas party at our home it's very few people so we can still do that you mm -hmm. know <laughs> um, and I told them I said I am very rich and they all like looked at me like really she's gonna what is she talking about i'm like i'm rich because each one of you is an important part of this team and mm. makes my life better mm -hmm. yeah. so your your input your work has made me rich not monetarily but rich in inside in mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I'm, your life's been enriched yeah, by yeah. that yeah. Yep. Right. So where so, you put value yeah. yeah, and that's that's where they are. They all come into my office when they need mm -hmm. to. We we work things out if there's an issue, and you know, mm. if there's not an issue and you just need to wail because you're having a sucky day, I'll listen to that too. So you know, it's... they're people. They're not like they're yeah, not machines. I, I, yeah, yeah I don't have mm. machines working for me. Mm -hmm. Good. And I, that's why you guys are as successful, if not more, than a lot of the big like corporate entities. And I'm not just talking about like in our industry, like everywhere yeah well we're still small we're still family yep. so it works and we are we are a work family we you know but we... it sounds like you've maintained the philosophy from three people to ten like that's the like you've maintained that same yeah, it, yeah. and it mm -hmm. has i mean we still have it's mm. kind of silly but we have birthday lunches so if somebody has a birthday we pull out a table and we have lunch together everybody mm -hmm. and we have you know that person gets birthday balloons and presents and you guys are <laughs> <laughs> so you know we we do that and you know we we I just we need to talk to kurt about doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he's not watching already yeah. hey now hey now, hey now. It's, hey now it's one more thing to just kind of make everybody 
get to, I think it's good for the team to get together. It's not yeah. necessarily team building where we all go on a retreat and but it's, stuff. But it's it, you have to maintain that, that closeness where trust and loyalty come into play. Yeah. You have to, to maintain that. To and, me, that's genuine. Like, a lot of companies do the team building and, like, it's seen for like it's like the mo going through the motions yeah. for what it's like. Yeah, oh, we're gonna have a pizza artificial. party. It's artificial. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, and not you play to these say it's fake, and, but yeah, it's theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It it is. just it is. kind of like man, mm -hmm. it's another, not really team building. Another like aspect. What you do if you're a good company, you know? Yeah. It's but that, that's you know. It's just this is the expectation we need yeah. to do it. Another yeah. aspect of what I love about working at Dumbarton is we, you really are that team. Today we got a shipment in. And most of us, I was not there. I was answering the phone, but <laughs> somebody has to answer the phone. You know, yep. most people, it's pretty much all hands on deck. Everybody's out there. And today, any of us that are here in New Hampshire know it was like a crummy day outside mm -hmm. and everybody came in. Everybody knew, okay, I got to go over there. I got to help get the shipment in, mm. you know? So it's very much. It's it's all hands on deck, and we all help each other. If something's going to what, when we got in the shipment the last time, we needed to. Dave Lafferty came mm -hmm. up for the day and helped in the warehouse to mm -hmm. help get stuff out. You know, so literally. It, I love know. you, Yvonne, but I disagree that today was a crummy day. I know I don't have to live in New England weather all the time, but I I think I'm a New Englander in the uh, in, on the inside. <laughs> inside. It was crummy this morning. I'm sorry. It was a, a it's your a your classic and... New England. December warm I'm from day. South Mississippi. I mean, like I've said it a few times on this trip, most days in the South, <laughs> it's like you took a really hot shower and put your clothes on without drying off. Like going outside, that's what it's yeah. like. The last Christmas I spent back home, it was 80 degrees on Christmas Day. Like it's awful. It's awful. Stop that's rubbing hard. it in. And the mosquitoes. Like, sorry, I, I digress. <laughs> yeah. You live in Florida. You know what I'm talking I about. Do. I live. I, I live do. near a mosh. So I mean. Yeah. I get mosquitoes all the time. Yeah. I, I live near the marsh. Oh, the marsh. <laughs> the marsh. <laughs> marsh. I live near the marsh. I live near the I remember the first pit. time I came up here and I, I loved it. But, like, in the, so <laughs> I understand, and rightfully so, people in, in New England and the North make fun of the way Southerners talk, as they should. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but the reverse is true. Like, there's an ugly, like, people will ironically use the word wicked. And I remember the first time I was in this pistol. lounge wicked and I pistol. heard somebody use the term wicked and I started chuckling. It's like, oh shit, that wasn't ironically. Like that's like, that's where that's we're the thing. And I was like, I, like, I need to stop laughing. Cause like, <laughs> because like every time people have used the word wicked, like where I've, it's, it's been kind of like as a joke, not, not, not denigrating, but it's, it's been an no, ironic wicked thing. Is definitely and it's like, <laughs> oh yeah. Like, but like, I, I love it up here. Like, I mean, it's just like, and again, I'm digressing, but like, mm -hmm. Well, bless you. I'm heart. a New Englander. On the <laughs> I was born. I was born an hour north of the Gulf Coast, and like I should have been born in New Hampshire. Like that's bless your little black heart. <laughs> My little Thank you. black heart. Wow. <laughs> Nick, how do you feel about that? I, f I love it. I love it a lot. I love it a lot. So, what else we got on the docket, Danny? Well, we We're... gotta we gotta start to move on to the. Life before the <laughs> been, bar closes. <laughs> We've been in here for so, an hour already. Yeah. Time flies what's, when you're having fun. What's, what's our final thoughts here on the uh, oh, beef it's great, man. I mean, come on, man. This thing's great. This size. It's cigar heaven, baby. Mm -hmm. It's a little slice of cigar heaven mm -hmm. where Winston Churchill is sitting up in his throne. and This really would go meat. well with the steak, too. Mm -hmm. It would. Yeah, I mean, they all would. argue they, after a steak. Yeah. They, like, right. They are. Or why wait till after? That's true. That's that's, that's my philosophy. Like, just like Ron Swanson, I'm going to finish the steak and the cigar and the scotch all at the same uh, time. Then we don't have Lagavulin. <laughs> we got some over there. I'll go get some. Go, go get some. I will after the show. <laughs> get some. Oh, yeah. Get you some. So, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to try it out on your show. Yeah. Well, no. Like, it's, this is this is awesome, and it's great to have you on again. Absolutely. Me, I'm not the new <laughs> Yvonne's kind of a regular Ooh, yeah. now. <laughs> She's all right. Yvonne, you're like one of my favorite people. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Yeah. We let's, shall. Let's switch the pipe here.
So are you actually going to get up and walk off, or are you going to stay and, and kibitz with us while we all I'll, I'll, I'll finish my cigar because yeah, I'm slow. I'm, I'm slow, but I did not bring a pipe. I That's have, all right. I've never done that. You've what? never done that? I've, I've never smoked a pipe. Well, as much considering. As, as much as Steve smokes a pipe, too. That's what I was going to say. Considering uh, that Mr. Saka is a is, is a pipe does. smoker, I would think that you would catch on by now. No. I, I, he'll, he smokes his pipe. He goes back and forth. But, mm-hmm. And he can smoke his pipe and then switch to the cigar and go back. And mm-hmm. I don't understand how he does it. Oh, I. Very easily. It's, but he'll, you know, he'll do this, and then he'll be watching the football game, and you have a lot of time there, so he just switches off and on. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but, like, I think we have a similar approach with, like, speaking to both pipe guys and cigar guys. Like, mm-hmm. one is not a substitute for the other. Mm-hmm. Like, I always tell people, if I want, like, a dessert, creme brulee, yeah. bowl of ice cream, cake, and I'm not saying one is sweet and one is savory, but I'm just saying, like, if you're in the mood for something... We'll use some more things. If I want a pizza, don't give me a steak. If I want a steak, don't better give not me give me a damn pizza. Like, how about a steak pizza? Mm. You know, I've had some good steak. But what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> like I got you there. Push. Like, if, I want, if, if I'm wanting a pipe, I love cigars. I love cigars. But if I want a pipe, like a cigar is not going to satisfy that craving. Mm-hmm. And like that's it, it's interchangeable that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's. It's not that there's room for both. It's that they serve totally different. What if it was a Stillwell star? To me, I still like. <sighs> Stop it. No, no. no I, I enjoy Stillwell. To, to me, that, to that gotcha. is a cigar. That is, but it's a unique cigar experience. But it's not a replacement for a pipe. And I don't, I don't think Steve designed it to be that. No, no, no he, yeah. he did not. It's not a replacement. You know, Steve taught me to smoke a pipe. Mm-hmm. I went to him and said, I really need to... You told me that story. You went yeah. to, like, over to his house and he had, like, hundreds of tins. Well, I didn't oh, know. It was ridiculous. It was before. <laughs> it was... I didn't know at that point that he even had Stillwell in his mind. And he did kind of get this, like, wicked little smile and, and you know, his eyes. And he's like, <laughs> you'll have to come over for dinner. And I came yeah. over for dinner. And then he's like, so let's go in here. And he opened up the door. And their dining room table was loaded with all these tins. And I went... Whoa, I don't need to smoke that much. <laughs> We're real good friends with your company. I would have broke yeah. I would have I would have yeah. broke out every pipe I had and, and, and we let's go to town, baby. For that relationship. Yeah. He he has all his pipes and then he also has the clay ones too. Oh. So I wish my bag was accessible. Like I've smoked a clay a lot on this trip. Like I love clay pipes. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know Steve liked clay pipes. Like <laughs> well, we, no, we need he, to talk. They're very simple, they're just white. And then he uses them to test all the... You get the, the purest, the... most, like, enhanced flavors from clay. So, like, mm-hmm. that that's awesome. I had yeah. no idea he was... He, he does have a few of them mm-hmm. just just for that reason, to try all the different mm-hmm. blends to see what he wants to put in this. I'm a huge advocate for clay pipes. That's awesome. So, for our pipe tobacco tonight, we're smoking the Savinelli uh, de Blonde de Oro. And... Uh, from the uh, little tin description there, it says the choicest Virginia's burleys and dark fired Kenyan leaf. Dark, dark what? Dark fired Kenyan leaf <laughs> are enhanced with an impeccable addition of spicy perique, then aged to perfection before being spun into enticingly beautiful zesty coins. It's like they've gotten a, the description uh tips from ashton or something speaking of flowery language Mm. uh a delightfully vivacious and flavorful smoke vivacious why are you diluting that scotch young man you you did that the first time i didn't say anything now you're doing it a second time i wish you and you should be arrested (laughs) no you should be arrested i was having this explanation to someone if you you should try it. a few drops. I'm not doing it. You bring the alcohol content down. No, you remove. The I don't. I like the alcohol content. I wish this was more. Had more alcohol no, content. No, I understand it. that, but the alcohol <laughs> effect and the flavor are are not linked. Same. It's blasphemy. The alcohol has benefit, but if you dilute the alcohol per no. volume, no, you broaden the flavor spectrum and you get to appreciate nuances. I'm getting the same amount of alcohol by drinking this whole thing with a few drops of water, but I get more. Variety of yeah. flavor. You, mm-hmm. sir. You, sir. I order my scotches neat, and I always put a few drops in because you should try it. I you will pick not. Up, you pick I'm up flavor. I'm on that bus. Yes, not do, trying it. Like, do like. Not trying it. I'm not doing it. You got do like six drops 
at the most. Levi, like over, three Levi over here is giving me a dirty look. I'm Swirl it around, it. and it's going to taste completely different. It's going to be the same scotch, but you're going to oh, pick up shit, flavors. You did too much. Now. I did eight. I'm screwed. You're going to pick up flavors <laughs> that you didn't pick up before. And it's just because alcohol, it. like that slight burn. Masks the and this Get is, that away yeah. from me. Let me say, this is a smooth scotch. It's not going to burn on the way down. <laughs> Don't touch but me with it. But when you take away that alcohol, you are able to pick up flavors that are present that you wouldn't have otherwise picked up because the alcohol, like, will, I don't want to say numb, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it. it yeah. Yeah, it no, overwhelms so subtle don't, flavors. Don't, no, because you planted a seed in your brain. No, it barely nope. changes it. No, nope. no. Nope. Like but your alcohol. But you're still, picking up a little bit more, right? Definitely more flavorful. It, it's subtle. Yeah, not doing it. And if you drink the whole tumbler, like <laughs> you're not, you're not having less tumbler. alcohol. You're just getting more flavor. <laughs> is it is rock it more flavor? glass tumbler? Like whatever you want to call it. Is I have it more a question flavor? about the pipe tobacco. Yes. Even though it? I'm not smoking it, is this a special holiday blend or what is this? No, so it is something a, different. It is a Savinelli branded pipe tobacco, which is one of the brands we represent. It's our the pipe brand that Laldizi Distribution Group has represented the longest. Savinelli has made pipes since 1876. Yep. And they're from um, Barasso, Italy, which is near Milan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I always use that as a selling point because it's so cool. Like, they have proprietary acrylic patterns. And, um, like, you won't find them in any other pipe. Like, they're they, very nice. They design them with the supplier that produces the acrylic, and then it is theirs. So you'll have other pipe companies sometimes, like, have things similar, but it's not going to be exactly like it's their patterns, their colors. So they're very fashion forward, being near Milan, Milan which is like yeah. a fashion mecca, mm -hmm. and um, very like luxury Italian. That's how like people think of Italian goods as luxury, oh, like Italian leather, cars, shoes. yes, yeah, like a Gucci, Dolce yeah. Gabbana, Lamborghini. Yeah. Mm. Like these are there's a reason these names have like global dominance in these like luxury mm -hmm. levels, and um, these are pipe tobaccos that were developed by. As a partnership between Savinelli, my distribution group, and um, a European manufacturer that stick true to that brand image. Okay. Um, I mean, you can only make pipe smoking so modern because it is a... and But see, that's what people <laughs> like about it is that it ties you back to like centuries worth of, of history. Mm. But their modern spins... Isn't he the worst? <laughs> um, the meek one here at the Earth, Dan. Um, but their their modern approaches to classic blending styles. Um, it's something that's available year round, but they they are special tobaccos. Okay. Um, so speaking of the the tin description, de Blonde de Oro <laughs> is a coin cut tobacco, mm -hmm. which is a a very old form of uh, tobacco production format for the tobacco. If you're a frequent watcher, like we've done rope tobacco before and stuff on the show, mm -hmm. and it's basically just a derivation on that. It's like pre-cut into the coins. But it's a mixture of Virginia, which is a flu-cured indirect heat, kind of like a, I don't want to say baked, but it's not like smoke or fire-cured, mm -hmm. which preserves a lot of sugar and brings sweetness. And there's a little bit of burley, which is an air-cured tobacco, not too dissimilar from cigar tobacco. It's not as heavily fermented. Uh, but it has a full body, a slightly nutty and earthy character. You've got the Perique, which is unique, um, as far as I am aware, up until very recently when people wanted novel approaches to, like, cigars, Perique has been always and exclusively, like, pipe tobacco. <clears throat> Excuse me, it started with uh, Native Americans in Louisiana. It still only comes out of Louisiana. It is picked before it's fully dried. It is put into basically like um, oak, uh, like a bourbon barrel. Bourbon barrels, but yeah. it, it's not a previous. It's not a barrel that has held bourbon, right. and then like it is a virgin barrel, and it's fermented for at least a year under pressure. And it is a really like odd tobacco, but it's amazing. Um, it's fermented, and so the aromas are very earthy, slightly fruity. And there's like a slight loamy mushroom character to it. Mm -hmm. And it is a chameleon. Like, 
the flavor drastically changes depending on what it's blended with mm -hmm. and the quantity in the blend. So Perique can give you anything from raisins, stewed fruit, fig to earthy, peppery, mm. like basically ranges from like really fruity and round to like very spicy white pepper sort. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a chameleon. Like it can serve many functions. Um, in this blend, it serves the more of the tobacco. World. Yes, and yeah. in this particular blend, it presents more like raisins mm -hmm. and a slight peppery spice. And then there is a fire cured tobacco in it that comes from uh, Kenya. And Kenyan fire cured tobacco, it's not too dissimilar if you're a pipe smoker from Kentucky, which is smoked over hardwood. Mm. But there's a slight baking spice and sweet note to it. Mm -hmm. And so all these flavors brought together and then aged under pressure in this coin cut makes this really cool mixture of this like spicy sweet earthy bowl it is a bold tobacco would mm -hmm. you not agree mm -hmm. and it's it's a very satisfying smoke it's i very have, nice i have set fire to many a tin of <laughs> this tobacco <laughs> and it's it's one of my favorites it's long been one of my favorites and um i think it's a great counterpart to the full-bodied rich meat stick and it pairs equally well, but in an entirely different way mm -hmm. to the scotch. Nick, what are your thoughts? Sweet, spicy, earthy. That's what I just said, man. Exactly. So what are your thoughts, Nick? Exactly that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly what Kaz was saying. Would that Nick was... like a cracker? I would not like a cracker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then stop parroting me. <laughs> oh! Could you have an original thought for one? I won't. <laughs> I'm just going to copy everything. I know I'm said. awesome, but like, be original. No, I will not. Another day, another smoke, boys. Are you liking it, Yvonne? I am. And and when I first started, I could definitely taste like, I swear I tasted orange peel. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, I I'm too. getting that some of that, That is the Virginia. Yes. yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are some aged Red Virginias in there, and I always say, like, it's not the first time you've even said on the mm -hmm. podcast, like, aged Red Virginias to me, like, all Virginias have a citrus note, but Red Virginias, particularly those of age, it's not like a sweet citrus, like orange flesh. It's like orange peel. Orange mm -hmm. peel. Yeah, it's yeah. that orange zest. Absolutely. There's a slight pleasant bitter note there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was very distinct. I, I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. look, I can see your palate. I can. Yeah. I could. Yeah. I would say, because I know we got a lot of, like, crossover viewers, I would assume. Yep. Like, if you're a cigar smoker and you're looking for something that's a, a very different experience from a cigar, but it's equally satisfying and would, would bring that same enjoyment, but a different, like, flavor perspective, mm -hmm. I think the Blown to Aura would be a satisfying smoke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see cigar guys. It's full body, flavor, this, spicy. Yeah. Like, it has a lot of the same adjectives for it, mm -hmm. but it's not referencing the same flavors mm -hmm. if that it tastes like that but different <laughs> but it, it it hits the same notes but in a very different way mm -hmm. you're licking your tongue there Yvonne. <laughs> how do you lick one's own tongue how do you do that i don't know but she's doing it tingling there. A woman of many talents is it the scotch or like what's your cheeks are red? Like what's up? Yeah, stop, stop. <laughs> Cindy, are you able to pick up any of the uh, room note from the smoke at all with everybody? It, it is very. Uh... It has... In my face. <laughs> no, no. It has a very sensual smell. That's, just, that's like... just Dan. That's. <laughs> I suppose. You're between us, so Just I'm not smelling very... him. Oh. <laughs> but he does. It's really a, a full... Like, I love pipe smoke. Mm -hmm. I love the way it smells. Yeah, my and, wife does too. And it's just... It's so, they're so different. Mm -hmm. But this one has a lot of depth. And mm -hmm. a lot of... You know, it, it just has that... A real sensual is the only mm. word that's coming to mind. So it kind of... For the person it, not smoking the pipe, I hear whether it's an aromatic because people are like, oh, my grandfather smoked a vanilla or a cherry, but like yeah. even non aromatic pipe tobaccos, I have heard from many like disassociated people or disconnected, like not not the non -pipe same group. Pipe smokers, yeah. Like pipe smoking has a like comforting aroma about mm -hmm. it. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. 
I mean, and this isn't me denigrating like Englishman's or Latakia at all, but that's the only like blend type that you don't hear that as much. Mm -hmm. But um, there is a warm, homey, comforting yeah. feel to it. And I was curious, like, but it has... you were asking about the room note. Like, how do, how do you, like, the unburnt, like, tin note, like, what does that do for you? Get really in there. Get in there, Cindy. <laughs> Get in there. You have to. Have you ever smelled like tobacco coming out of the polone? Do you have to get your nose in there? You got to get in there. Mm -hmm. Got to get that nose in there. Man, he is very New England. He isn't a nose in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a New Englander. It, it's and, and it's I'm wicked say, comforting. Wicked. It, it it's is, a wicked pisser. But it's, it's sophisticated. Mm. So when you get those aromatics, they're pretty straightforward. Right. Vanilla and cherry and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe raisins and things. Not in a bad way, but it is very one note. Right. Yeah. But this mm -hmm. has got a lot of nuanced elements. Mm. And that's why I think, like I said, it's it has this roundness body to it mm -hmm. that makes you feel a little bit less, you know, just flat. It's It's got a real... I don't even know how to describe it. It's just really... Complexity. Yeah. It's got the complexity. It's nuanced. It's not in your face. But it's... You can tell it's mm. like the blend of everything together. Right. So it is... So, yeah, it is a united flavor. It's not disparate. Like, oh, I can taste the Virginias and I can taste this. It's... it. They're it's all, all brought together in harmony. Together. But I just had the realization. I'm kind of embarrassed. Like, I've smoked this for probably like five or six years. So it's an old favorite. But every single tobacco in this blend goes through a totally different curing method we've got mm -hmm. flu cured air cured fire cured and fermented like no two tobaccos in this blend are treated the same way once they're picked yeah well, we have and it creates so you have these very different sensory experiences brought together in harmony mm -hmm. and yeah sorry i'm having an epiphany here thank you <laughs> so like you you <laughs> Cindy, so... like I get it. Like you were just my muse. Like Steve couldn't do it without you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I lost my train of thought. Thank you. <laughs> we redheads have to stick together, right? We do because mm -hmm. hype not, each other up. There's just not that many anymore. Um, no. So, you know, sometimes we get a cigar that's that way, that's mm -hmm. full and round, and just has all those things as you go along. But even in the smell, I get like the aromas that mm -hmm. are coming out of all your pipes has that same thing. I can't pinpoint mm -hmm. and say it smells like cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't yeah. do that. You get it's... maybe notes that allude to it, yeah. but that's not all it is. And to yeah. me, that's a mark of a good blend. Like if you can pick out a single component in the entire blend, mm -hmm. to me, that's not a balanced blend. And I think right. the same is true for cigars. Like if you're smoking, yeah. it's like, oh, there's a lot of Jalapa in this, or there's a lot of Corojo. Like, yeah. like it's fine to pick up those notes and go, oh, yeah, this is there. But if that is the prominent flavor and everything else is secondary right. or tertiary? Mm. Tertiary. Oh. Mm. Third place. Like, to me, that's, <laughs> and maybe not always, mm. but that's indicative of a not like an unbalanced blend. You want everything to yeah. come together. It's like an orchestra. Like you don't want to hear all woodwinds and then right. like right. the brass is secondary or like you want everything to come together. Mm -hmm. And then make that blend. Mm -hmm. And it, it just, it... Sorry. <laughs> oh, how's it pair with the scotch, Yvonne? <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, boy. Now I'm interested to, hear a little explanation from you Kaz on how you think this pairing differs from the cigar haven't I talked enough, <laughs> not enough. well I know I know Nick's not going to be able to do Nick it because he's just more. he's almost done with his scotch I am and I think his I tongue, more about Dunbar than the two Dunbar his, yes. his tongue's <laughs> numb from you know all the alcohol it's there lovely yeah because he was only a double he I doesn't mean that's throw not in that few, much Really, with it, is four or five drops of water really no, that no, much of a not sacrilege? Doing not doing it. Not I mean, it. I know that many would call me a heretic, but not doing really? it. Really? No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Sorry. Your intransigence is not a virtue. <sighs> nope. I love you for many reasons, but that's I love not you too, <laughs> I love you too, bud, but the water I'm not doing. I it's not that. enough to dilute the whiskey just to I don't care. make you appreciate it more. I don't care. 
So you were asking. You were saying that that this paired very well with the Glen Morangi 14, but in a different way than the cigar did. So mm-hmm. what's what's your take on the difference? What is? I don't know. I was talking out of my ass, man. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so whereas with the with the meat lovers, I felt like it was a good sweetness counterbalance Mm -hmm. with the the red meat lovers like Mm -hmm. the red meat lovers is very full Mm -hmm. it is very like i i get the little bit of earth but Mm -hmm. it is not it is not the it it is just a nuance Mm. i got the uh dark chocolate particularly like one of those like really high cacao percentage yeah Mm -hmm. like 70 80 percent but it, it did lack the bitterness of those bars like those and i like that i love dark chocolate but like it had all of the fullness and richness and like those nuances you get without mm-hmm. that like bitter note. Mm. Like I get no bitterness from red meat lovers at all. I get a no. very strong savory component. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And the best way I can liken it. And this is probably not something that I'm going to sound like a hipster here. Go it's probably it. not something that a lot of people have tried just because like, understandably it's not an attractive combination for most people. Mm. But a lot of, I think many people are, a decent amount of people have tried like chocolate covered bacon or something of that nature. Salty and sweet is like scientifically proven to be the ultimate combination. Mm -hmm. Like Lay's and such like spend a lot of money finding the perfect combination between sweet, salty, and fat Mm. to make their products (laughs) literally addictive. Like, Like because that combination like hits the human like palate. In a very particular way. Yeah. So like salty and sweet is something I think that a lot of people enjoy. Yeah. But most people who have tried like chocolate covered bacon or something like that, it's milk chocolate. True. But if you've ever had it with dark chocolate, which I've had, like it is very deep and robust. Mm-hmm. And even though there's less sugar there, there is still just like there's a primal sweetness there, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, there's just this, like, not an additive sweetness, but, like, what's inherent. Mm. And honestly, I think it brings it more out of, like, the bacon than the, the chocolate. And I get a lot of that from the red meat lovers, like, just this rich, bold combination of flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That this savory and this subtle sweetness. And because it's a Highland Scotch, mm. I think that they each make each other more of themselves. Yes. Whereas with the Dablon de Oro, which is very spicy and full in an entirely different way yeah. than the Red Meat Lovers, I think that while they balance each other, this actually highlights the depth and not the spiciness, but the darker notes of the pipe tobacco. Mm-hmm. Like that, I love fire cured tobacco. A lot of blends I smoke, and you can relate to this. You smoke a lot of fire cured tobacco, yeah. and we're excluding Latakia from this. We're talking like Kentucky African fire cured. Right. Like you smoke a lot of uh, Cumberland and Dark yep. Bird's Eye. Yep. And those are both fire cured tobaccos that are very different in character, mm-hmm. very different. And just like wine or cigar tobacco, like wine connoisseurs will will talk about the terroir, which is basically just the location that the grape was grown and mm-hmm. the same with the tobacco. Like you can have two <laughs> tobaccos of the same seed variety, but grown in different areas. Are you okay, Yvonne? I'm fine. <laughs> oh my oh, God. What? <laughs> but pull, pull a Joe Pesci. What? How am I funny? How am I funny? Am I here to amuse you? <laughs> Do I amuse you? Like, no, exactly. Tell me how I'm funny. I think the scotch actually deepens and sweetens the orange notes of the yeah. I could I totally see that now that you say it. I didn't pick it up on my own, but now that you say that, like it mm-hmm. clicks. Yeah. But I kinda um, get that. For me, it's like I don't know. Now when I when I'm smoking the pipe tobacco and I'm uh, I'm drinking the meringue mangy <laughs> I get, I get, I get, I get a lot of cinnamon. And that's coming from the Kenyan fire cured. Like people when I tell people like, oh, African Dark fired varieties have a baking spice to it. It's like, like I taste smoke that's my and mouth wood, feel and they're like, I don't get that. And I'm like, keep smoking it. Like that's one of those like flavor nuances yeah. that it takes a lot of time to really like pick up because it is subtle. Yeah, 
I didn't get it for, I'm not trying to make myself sound like any sort of way. Like it mm-hmm. took me a minute. Like I love African <laughs> fire cured tobacco and it took me, it's like, I started to pick up notes like clove, cinnamon, mm-hmm. allspice. Clove. And then like after a while, it's like, oh, now that's what I'm getting almost exclusively from it. Apart from the smoke, like the smoke, not like the fire cured smoke, not just. I'm getting like a the smoke. fruity chocolate note in there as well. That's the Perique. And um, the uh, Kenyan fire cured combination. Yeah, oh. uh, it's weird. It's like I'm getting that orange peel, and then like right after, it's like almost eating like a well, chocolate, chocolate covered, covered orange peels. That or uh, chocolate covered strawberry almost. Mm-hmm. And it's very, and then it's that, and then right after that, it's spice. Mm-hmm. I don't get the strawberry aspect of it. Yeah. Well, my wife works for edible arrangements, so yeah. I eat a lot of chocolate. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Like, take, take this subjective. I'm not saying that, like, oh, you're wrong. But I I see where you would get that from. Like, now yeah. that you say it, it's like, okay. I can... But that that's the fun thing about trying this stuff, right? Like, everybody picks up little different mm-hmm. notes. And, like, somebody will say, oh, I get this. And you never would have gotten it until it's like, okay, mm-hmm. I see what you're getting at yeah, here. Like, yeah. And that's what's, like, fun about, like, smoking cigars or pipe tobacco. Mm-hmm with friends like you start to like compare notes it's like okay that's cool everybody picks up something different but i i agree with you it brings out the the dave like what exactly did you say you were picking up with the scotch? cinnamon cinnamon yeah yeah so i i think that it pairs well as far as bringing out the depth of the pipe tobacco mm-hmm. i think that it's a good counterbalance to the uh the citrusy notes mm-hmm. i think it brings out because it it's a Highland Scotch. It's a little bit lighter in the peat. I think it does bring out um, some of the more fruity components that you get from the Perique and the mm. Virginias. I think they complement this Scotch complements both in very different ways. Mm. Kind of like, um, okay, my my Southerner is coming out here, but <laughs> my Southerner is coming out here. Don't knock it till you try it. Don't knock it till you try it. They, no, I do declare. I do declare. In so, New Orleans. You put salt on a steak, which is pretty tame. Like that, that you should salt a steak. Jesus, Mary Joseph. And I would argue you should salt a steak 24 hours before you actually cook it. But that's mm-hmm. we'll get into a different conversation there. Savory pe- people on. with salt and savory don't kill me, fall. Cash. Killing me over here. But if you put salt in caramel on chocolate or that's different on watermelon. Oh, watermelon! Oh my goodness! That combination. It brings out more of the sweetness. Like I, so if you've ever watched like Good Eats with Alton Brown, brother. Mm-hmm. So he said something one time, and it's something that I, brother, we, we, I, uh, I, we gotta I, have a cook off. Uh, he articulated his madness. I've always liked to cook. I've cooked since I was seven years old. I've always had a passion for it. And he said something that I always like. It's you ever hear somebody say something that you knew but you didn't know you knew it until they, yeah. He articulated no, something, and it was like an epiphany. Salt makes things taste more like themselves, if mm. used correctly. And he used the watermelon analogy. Mm. If you can, if your food tastes salty, or if you can taste the salt in your food, you had too, too much. much. There's too yes. much. Yeah. You should not taste a salt flavor in your food. Salt enhances flavors that are already present because of how salts interact with the taste sensory mm-hmm. <laughs> salted pork and so if you salt watermelon if you salt <laughs> chocolate Tomatoes, caramel eggplant. yes mm-hmm. you're yep. amplifying that. flavors that are yeah. already <laughs> present mm-hmm. yeah. and i think that the scotch has the same effect on this tobacco whereas it's, it's salt, salting it. it's salt to the pipe tobacco mm. where it's sugar to the red meat lovers mm-hmm. mm. There you go. Okay. 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 I, I got there eventually, guys. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. man. I got there eventually. Like, like, Holy shit. 12 minutes, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to we're gonna, worth it. Levi's going to be closing the, <laughs> hold, closing the hold shop. Hold on. I promise it's worth and it, guys. And he's going to be still talking I about it. I promise it's basically like this week on the it's cash worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so listen to me ramble listen to me listen my, to me my ramble is basically foreplay to the main event i promise there's, it's there's worth a point it. there there's a point that he's trying to make yeah so it's most, gonna take 30 minutes but he's gonna make it most importantly do Only you 30. sell this in the shop <laughs> Do you sell this? We do, uh, they will we now. do now. They yeah. do now. <laughs> so really, like, now we have so, to. So in, in <laughs> Twins and Dan's, like, uh, I'll have, they carry a very broad, like, arguably one of the most broad 
offerings of a lot of brick and mortar shops in the country yeah. of what we offer. Like not just what we offer in general, but what we offer, they, they have a good cross section of our catalog compared to most brick and mortars because we have a pretty, pretty wide broad variety of pipe yeah. tobacco just wide. in cornell and deals offerings well, alone yeah. oh yeah you saw on our dining room table yes, <laughs> yeah. yes i did yeah. but it's um, probably because we smoke everything you know? that's, <laughs> that's true too yeah i mean variety you know, is spice of life oh, right that's what they say but um this event like the past two events like we we did a hybrid event in october where i brought seven and peterson brands that like i rep i sell but um, we also uh, rep and sell Briarworks yep. pipe tobacco. We don't, like, they, they distribute their own pipes. But we have a really good working relationship with them. They're good friends of ours. And it's like, I want to do something different. Let me back that up. Dan wanted to do something different, something special for an event. And you called it Pipetoberfest. And it's like, mm -hmm. how can I set this apart other than, like, cash showing up? with Pearson and Savinelli, which people love. It's but how to set this event apart. It's like, you know what? Like Pete and the guys down in, in Nashville or Columbia, but outside of Nashville, like we we rep their pipe tobaccos. We manufacture their pipe tobaccos. You guys have always wanted to do an event with Briarworks. It's like, let me see what the, like Let's they do just it. don't have the manpower to it's like, hey, well, how would you fight guys feel if like you sent some pipes and like we did a hybrid show and they were all for it. Yeah. And so I brought a lot of Briarworks tobaccos. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a lot of excitement with that. And so I took that idea and it's like, we're, we always do a Savinelli event in December. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, you carried some Savinelli tobaccos, mm -hmm. but you've never carried Dablon de Aura or Brunella Flake. Right. right. It's like, I'm going to bring like a dozen of those and let's see how they go. And they, they were pretty well received. Mm -hmm. And, um, Dablon de Oro has always been a personal favorite. I mean, for mm. at least the last half decade. And, um, yeah, I think mm. there's probably demand now for you guys to mm. add just two more faces. I think so. <laughs> at least. We're running out of room, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I know, right? it's like you need more room. Yeah, Kurt. We need another wing. Yeah, yeah. we need another shelf <laughs> space. Uh, yeah, all that other stuff, all that... Uh, all the vintage uh, tins and stuff yep. like that are going to have to uh, go to another shelf. And speaking, like of, that. speaking of always doing the 7 Ellie event in December, we just had ours yep, yep. on Saturday, our 7 Ellie Christmas event. And we had, what, 20, 25 people stay for the afternoon. At and, least, and yeah. smoke. And we actually did a scotch pairing. Mm -hmm. And uh, for 25 bucks, you could get three different scotches and... This, the de Blondo Oro and the um, Brunello Flake. For what it's worth, if you've had both tobaccos or if you were a fan of scotch, both pair very well with scotch, mm. but in very different ways. Mm -hmm. And we had a we had an awesome show. It was a great event mm -hmm. and everything. And, and part of the testament to that was that people, people generally, they get there early for these events. They start at noon. And we had people show people, up at 11. People show up at 11. We hadn't even know? fully set up yet. <laughs> you know, and yeah, they're like, what's going on? And I'm like, it, it, it ha this has been going on forever. I'm like, oh, it's only officially been going on for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but usually around 3, 3.30, people are starting to, you know, either come up to the bar, go home, you know, but they're starting to, to leave. The, like three or four stragglers event. at the end. Yeah. This time, people were there till like five, five thirty, and it was the majority of the attendees. Like it yeah. was at least like what a dozen people or better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was it was crazy, but uh, mm. great selection of pipes, Kaz. And uh, I didn't realize what time it was because usually when I I mean I'm I'm up here a lot, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that speaks to like the testament. Like you guys have a amazing club, mm -hmm. and you're all right, Dan. <laughs> and you're adequate. He's okay. And you meet expectations. The bare man. And, <laughs> and I think I'm just about finished with this bowl, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm already finished yeah. with my bowl. I, I'm I mean, burning don't worry the about bowl at this you point. You go home. And you're going to have to pass me the bowl. Usually I know that it's getting time to Dumb. like wind down the events because they're 12. <laughs> when it's like, oh, there's like half dozen or fewer people here. Mm-hmm. The event ends at four. They've always ended at four. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize what time it was until I checked my watch because, like, usually that's how I gauge it with how many people mm -hmm. are still left. It's like, oh, we probably have about an hour left. And 
it's 4 30 and most people are still here mm -hmm. and i was like that's awesome mm -hmm. you know like that type of like engagement with the club and people are having a good time and that sort of community and um i think the tobaccos were well well received mm, they were yes and um i mean i'll, I'll always advocate for deblon brunello is great i'll always advocate for deblon d'oro mm. it's it's one of my favorites mm. 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 dave how, how do you mm. feel about like the tobacco as a whole not necessarily its relationship to the scotch but in general well, you know, I'm excited just because it has Virginia in it. But, mm -hmm. you know, cool. the, uh, no, I think it, it is a very well rounded uh, tobacco. And I'm definitely going to be spending money I don't have on it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, bon, what do you, how do you feel about it? I really enjoy it. It's very good. Mm -hmm. What did you enjoy about it? Oh, don't. You gotta get into the details. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, like flavor. New, oh, oh, I, I taste know, notes of stone like fruit and leather. No, like, like, what about it do you enjoy? Like, I'm not asking you to be like a pretentious wine taster, but like, raspberry. No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I say I'm, take I'm this totally objective, joking. but I would say you're wrong. No, no. I'm. That's actually kind of an inside joke because every now and then we get people that say, "Don't you taste the raspberry?" And I'm like, "Raspberry," but so. I will name the reviewer. I will not name the reviewer or the website or anything. But I remember smoking a cigar. Like I always smoke a tobacco or a cigar blind, and then I will smoke the tobacco or cigar again while reading a review site or a, a reviewer to see if they're picking up things that I didn't pick up. And do I pick up? But like, if you read a review first, I think it colors the. I think so too. And yeah. I did that one time, and I was smoking a cigar. I won't name the cigar or the the reviewer. But they describe getting notes of great bubble gum. What? <laughs> it Barry. must have been smoking a Tatiana. <laughs> that was like they must have been smoking a Tatiana. Right Did you chew like great bubble gum before smoking this cigar? Probably. I don't know what you're getting, man. <laughs> like so. Anyway, like like what is it about it that you find enjoyable? Like it doesn't necessarily be flavor elements, but like what is satisfying about it to you? What did somebody say? Uh oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys next to us. Uh oh, all okay. crunch berries. Uh oh. <laughs> no, you know what? Pipe smoking is just a completely different experience yes. for me. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know, it just kind of like chills me out. I don't know how to describe <laughs> no, it. No, I've always said cigars to me, like I smoke them alone, but they, they're a social smoke to me. They're, they're almost an elevator. Whereas pipe smoking to me is, I mean, you, it's not necessary. Like I smoke pipes around people and cigars alone, but they're more. Mm. Cigars are more of a social smoke to me, or more predisposed to that. And pipes to me are more of a solitary contemplative. Well, so they kind of lower you to the occasion. Right. Well, mm. I am still definitely more in the novice kind of stage of this. You know, I mm. have to keep relighting. And, <clears throat> well, that, I you, mean, know. you should. Like, I well, would argue that anybody who says they're peaceful. an expert on yeah. cigars or pipe tobacco, it makes me ri raise an eyebrow. Because you learn something. There's There's too much to learn for anybody to be like... Oh, there's nothing else for me to learn. I'm an expert. But you end up being, it's like a one-on-one -on -one experience. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't yeah. mean to be nasty, but I kind of tune you guys out so a little nasty. bit as I do this. No, no. I just mean like you get in into the pipe and what mm -hmm. you're doing and what, what, what notes you can taste. And it's contemplative. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Yep, yes. Very much so. Yes. No, I thoroughly <clears throat> enjoy this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it. it why well, I said earlier, I think it's definitely something a cigar smoker would enjoy because it is very full-bodied, very yeah. body, it is. very deep yes. in flavor. Mm -hmm. No, but I agree. Pipe smoking for me also is a very personal experience. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. It's you and the pipe, baby. Mm -hmm. It's you yeah. and the pipe. Well, I want to thank you guys for all being with us tonight. It's oh Cindy yeah, Ron and Kaz, I really appreciate all the time you gave us tonight Thank you're you. welcome dan that yeah. smells really good right now <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome well i think we have all given our hearty approval for the uh the blown to oro as yeah. well as the beef stick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... oh you mean the cigar sorry yeah Smart ass. Smart ass. <laughs> Both of which it'll take you two years to call up. me that. That's a record. <laughs> Usually, it's within the first five yeah. minutes someone meets me. Well, that's our show for tonight, everybody. Said. Thanks for being with us, and we hope to see you next Monday, nine o'clock, right here. And that's not just blowing smoke.
Stay smoky, my friends. You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is not just blowing smoke.